Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf and to another recent reads on Sunday a video once or twice a month in which I discuss the books that I've read recently. And the first two books I want to talk about are actually leftovers from May. So I finished them not in June but in end of May, last week of May. And the first one of those is My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyen Gong Breathwaite, uh, published in 2018 and um, shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction this year. I will leave uh, I, I, will, I will leave a link to the Women's Prize website down below if you want to check out um, you know the long list or the short list for this year. Um, Breathwaite is a young Nigerian author. She was born in 1988 and she lives in Lagos and My Sister the Serial Killer is her debut novel. Um, the book is about two sisters, um, beautiful young Ayola and older sister, little older, I mean not old, but older sister, Koridi, uh, who is a nurse in a hospital. Um, Ayola, like I said, very beautiful, has a slew of boyfriends and admirers and there's only one problem, she tends to kill them. And then uh, Koridi, um, the more practical sister, is asked to help up clean the mess. That's basically the premise of the book. Um, first off, I have to say I really enjoyed this book. Um, I thought, if, I mean, it's a debut novel, so it's not perfect by any means, but it was well written, it was well paced, uh, it was funny, um, uh, it's told from the perspective of the older sister, so Corridi, um, and she is quite witty, um, talking about, you know, how she cleans up and what kind of bleach uh, you best use. Um, the story then develops uh, because um, um, Corridi is secretly in love with a doctor at the hospital she works, but unfortunately this doctor falls in love, of course, with the younger sister, Ayola. So plot ensues, as you can imagine. Um, what I really liked about the, the book, or no, let's say the way I read it, it was um, um, more a satire on... Uh, uh, today's society in Nigeria and the position of women, uh, how much uh, we, I don't think that's only in Nigeria, but how much we value beauty in women, how um, men treat women, uh, beautiful women like Ayola, but also less beautiful women like Koridi. And the, the the whole killing aspect was for me a satire on just imagine um, if women were to, you know, fight back. So I, yeah, I, I liked it. I thought it was enjoyable despite, you know, the killing, which doesn't sound enjoyable, but I thought it was a funny satire on today's society. We learn a lot about Lagos and the, the city and the people in there, but more specifically, we learn about the position of women, which, like I said, is not confined to Nigeria, but you can extrapolate that to other societies in the West. So I, I enjoyed it and I can recommend it. Um, if you are into this kind of book uh, satirizing and a lot of blood and a lot of killing. The second book of the May Leftovers was a book that I read for a real life book club I have here in, in Germany and that is Sarah Stritzberg, The Faculty of Dreams. Translated, I read the English translation, so translated from the Swedish by Deborah Bregan Turner. Um, published last year in the English translation, the original Swedish translation, uh, the original Swedish book was published in 2006. Sara Stritzberg obviously is a Swedish author, um, quite an acclaimed author in Sweden, and this book was um, long listed for the Man Booker International Prize this year. Um, the Faculty of Dreams is about um, a, a real-life historical event, uh, April 1988, when a woman called Valerie Solanos um, shot Andy Warhol. Um, she didn't kill him, obviously, but she 
severely injured him and another uh, friend of his in his studio in New York. Um, Solanos was um, a radical feminist. She was most famous for her um, uh, scum manifesto in which she basically tells you to kill all men. I mean, I'm exaggerating, but that's the gist of it. So this book takes the historical event and the historical figure and then the, the author tries to picture um, uh, Valerie's life. It's not um, a fictionalized biography, by all means. Um, uh, uh, the author talks about the fact that she imagines the life. There are certain things altered um, in, you know, the if you check the life of the real Valerie, you can see that in the book it's not sticking to the historical facts uh, in all aspects, but it does take um, the shooting of Andy Warhol as a center and the court case and what happens uh, to Valerie later on. Um, the book opens uh, with Valerie's death uh, in a sleazy hotel room in uh, New York. Um, I have to say, I'm normally not at all in for this, you know, postmodern bullshit with uh, uh, introducing or including the author in it and changing um, from, you know, sort of made up interviews between the author and, and uh, the Valerie um, court case transcripts. But I, I definitely enjoyed it. It was a very original book, I thought, um, giving me an idea of this person, Valerie, or better, an, the the way the author views this person, um, a very tragic uh, life from from a, a childhood that was, um, you know, a, an abusive stepfather and an, a decline into mental illness and uh, death in, like I said, that sleazy hotel room. So I really thought it was a good book, but I'm also very much aware of the fact that this is not a book for everyone. If you're interested, you should, you know, just download um, a sample uh, from, from Amazon and see whether the, um, the structure and the writing appeals to you, and then you might read it, but I can totally understand if you say, that's not for me. And then on to the books um, that I read in the first uh, bit of June. As you know, probably if you're following Booktube or if you're following my channel, uh, June is Reading Women Month. And if you don't know what that is, um, Reading Women is a podcast run by Kendra Winchester, who is also a booktuber, and her friend Autumn Privet. I will leave a link to the podcast down below. You should definitely check that out if you are into podcasts. Um, and June is their anniversary, and this year it's their third anniversary. They started the podcast on the 1st of June three years ago. So June is always their celebration month in which they come up with a couple of challenges, uh, reading women for the month of June. I made a TBR video. Uh, you find the link to that down below as well. And this year um, they didn't make a list of challenges, but they made a bingo card. And I told you already, if you watch that in my TBR video, that I will first of all do the diagonal um, bing bingo from the top uh, left to the bottom right. And the first book uh, or the first square in this bingo is Aussie Arthur. And for that prompt, I picked uh, a debut memoir by Australian author Vicky Lavo Harvey, The Erratics, which was published in 2018 and won this year's Stella Prize. <sighs> Stickers. Printed into the cover. <sighs> I hate that. But anyway. Um, I have to say up front, um, this book is really difficult to get a hold of outside of Australia. I've, as I've understood, they've now sold the rights to uh, the US rights and the UK rights, so maybe it will uh, be easier uh, to get uh, soon. But I was sent this book by an Australian friend who lives in New York, and she bought it and then sent it to me. So she bought it in Australia, and anyway. 
So it's I don't know whether you'd be able uh, to get a hold of it, but in the future you will. So if you're interested, you can you know put it on your on your TBR list and and get it later. Um, Vicky Lavo Harvey uh, was born in Canada in Alberta, but she moved to Australia um, and has been living there ever since. So she is considered an Australian author. Um, this is a memoir about um, uh, Vicky Lavo Harvey's parents. Um, the book opens when the elderly mother um, uh, falls in the kitchen and breaks her hip and is hospitalized. And Vicky Lavo Harvey and her sister go to Canada. Uh, to, the, the parents live in a very remote farm, uh, quite secluded. Um, and um, the memoir then deals with uh, the difficult family situation because um, uh, Lavo Harvey's mother is seriously ill, mentally ill, has been for quite some time and the father uh, is quite frail and has to be looked after and then the book tells us the family story, you know, a little bit about the childhood, how the two sisters dealt with the situation, but focusing on the current uh, a problem, uh, trying to get the mother um, confined to a, a psychiatric hospital. I thought, uh, I, I, I really liked the book. Um, I thought it was well written. You really get a feel for the, for the family and the family dynamics. Um, there was one um, yeah, issue that I thought was if I put it uh, neutrally interesting, um, but I, I questioned, I questioned it, and I talked to Jacqueline uh, from Six Minutes for Me about it. Um, what is not really addressed is the role of the father uh, in in that whole uh, family situation, because the mother, uh, as we learned, treated uh, the two sisters really badly already when they were young and still living at home um, because of her mental illness, and the father just didn't step up. So the father is portrayed as a victim also of his wife and his wife's mental illness, but I missed the you know the, the 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 fact of addressing his role and his re responsibility especially in the earlier years but still it's an, um, a memoir absolutely worth your while especially if you are interested in Australian authors and the topic of mental illness the next book of my reading women month reads I want to talk to you about is a book that I read for the middle square in this uh, bingo card which means free which says free space I always love that because you can just pick any book uh, written by a female author and I picked a book that I was already planning to read before I knew the bingo card and that is Joyce Carol Oates new book My Life as a Red which was published on the 1st of June and I received a copy through NetGalley. Thank you very much. Joyce Carol Oates, I, I don't need to talk about. If you want to know more about Joyce Carol Oates, um, um, Eric Carl Anderson from The Lonesome Reader just made a video um, uh, today or yesterday, I think, because it's Joyce Carol Oates's birthday, uh, where he talks about his love, first of all, of Joyce Carol Oates, but also the video is titled All You Have to Know About Joyce Carol Oates. I'll leave a link uh, to his video down below. Uh, My Life as a Rat um, is about um, a young woman looking back at her childhood. Um, Violet Rue um, is her name, Violet Rue Kerrigan, and she recalls events uh, when she was 10, 11, and um, she was a, a witness or she, she became a, a, a witness to uh, two of her older brothers uh, killing uh, a young black boy. Uh, the brothers are subsequently um, uh, arrested and convicted and sent to jail and Violet Rue is first taken into sort of protective custody, the foster care, and she is not uh, allowed home. Her parents don't want her back uh, at home, so she lives with an aunt. Um, the plot then develops. We see how Violet Rue, you know, uh, 
how she does in her new environment, uh, trying, you know, to get settled there. And then all kinds of things happen, of course, uh, when one of the brothers is released from prison um, about 15 years later. So uh, Violet Rue then is in her mid to late 20s. Um, I love the writing. Um, it's quite a stream of consciousness style, uh, going back and forth in time, recalling events, um, memories of the childhood, of the family, uh, with the you know the relationship between the parents, but also within the group of siblings. Um, but I have to say, sadly enough, the story re didn't really come together for me. I was interested in like the title suggests, Violet Rue's life as a rat, ratting out her brothers. But uh, the, the middle of the book, uh, when Violet lives with uh, her aunt and when she goes to college then later on, it sort of, it, it, I don't know, it, it fizzled away for me with a lot of other um, events coming in, touched upon uh, abuse, um, uh, her relationship with various men, teachers, uh, who then, you know, uh, abuse her. And I don't know, it, it, I had this feeling of, especially in the middle part of the book, that the, the, the Joyce Carol Oates wandered away into a different book, into a different story, came back then at the end, but it, it was not, it never became a whole for me. Maybe I will reread it and I will certainly watch uh, when Eric, um, uh, because he's reading the book as well at the moment, when he makes a review. Uh, but for now, I just have to say writing gorgeous, premise interesting, um, but no, as a whole, it just didn't come together. And the last book I want to talk to you about is a book that I also read for um, Reading Women Month, but also for a book club, uh, Mel's Read Around the World book club. I've talked about that book club a million times, so I only will leave links to the Goodreads group down below. Um, and if you watch my TBR video for Reading Women, then you know that I will try to make a second bingo across. Uh, and one of the squares says graphic novel. And for that, I read this book, um, Donia Maher, uh, The Apartment in Bab el Luk, first published in Egypt in 2014, and then published in the English uh, translation, I think, in 2016. I will leave the correct date down below. Um, it's a very short uh, book, more of a, a poem, actually. Um, let me see whether I can find a good illustration. Yeah, like this. Um... Uh, about uh, a man, a recluse, who lives in an apartment building uh, in Bab el Luk, and we learn about, you know, his life looking out of his apartment, doing groceries, uh, being reclusive and lonely. Uh, it's a dark, uh, uh, quite a dark book. I enjoyed the, the writing more than the illustrations, but that's because I don't read many graphic novels, so I'm just not used to this combination of text and, and visuals, uh, but that's that's very personal. I can certainly recommend it if you're into graphic uh, novels, uh, want to try something out, because this is really short, um, and it's uh, the, uh, yeah, the, the the atmosphere of this this apartment building and the the people around it in you know the the square, it, it's really beautiful. So. The Apartment in Bob L. Look. This was it for my recent reads on Sunday. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'm looking forward to talking to you in the comments as always, and I will see you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.